first Comic Con. That's right, first Comic Con. First movie. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. You know? Uh, when did you find out you were coming out? The Thursday, the second day before we wrapped. So, like, we're coming down? Yeah. We talked about it, we weren't sure it was going to happen, and then we got it to work out. Uh, literally, as I was dealing with probably one of the most emotional scenes in the movie, while at the same time, Running over and looking to see that little scissor wheel we cut together for the, the Comic Con thing. So that was intense. For fans that don't know much about the book, uh, what do you want to do? Give them a little long line. I was pissed at Laura Flies and his loss. It's a very dark kids' movie. Although I didn't make it as a kids' movie, it just has kids in it, you know? Um, it's about survival. It's about these kids that are wind up, you know, they wake up in this elevator, don't know how they got there, their, their mind has been basically wiped, they don't have any memories of where they came from, and they are deposited into this place called the Glade, which is about a, a about three football fields long, square, surrounded by several hundred feet foot uh, stone wall, and beyond those walls is a maze, and these boys have been living in this place for three years, trying to find a way out of the maze, and they have to get back, um, before the doors close from that maze because no one survives the night in the maze. So these boys are trapped inside this little prison. They had to create their own little world as they're just trying to band together to survive and find a way out of this place that they've been mysteriously brought to. When you're facing material on a book, how much do you have the liberty to do? I have total liberty, you know, but I wanted to stay really true to the book, you know. Um, I wanted to make something that the fans would appreciate and recognize, but at the same time trying to do a good job with just a movie. You know, things hadn't changed, but um, we did the best we could with keeping all the important stuff that's in the book. You know, what, what people got excited about in the first place. I mean, it's sold out of how many co- million copies it sold. That tells me what I need to know right there. Something works, so I don't want to break it. You know what I mean? This not a series. How much are you doing in this first movie? Yeah, trying right, trying very hard to. You know, when I when I was in the studio, uh, they 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 would like this to be a franchise book, so I want to be responsible and give them that. You know, so that's one other reason why I couldn't really fear too much from what was in the book. Not that I wanted to, but you know, I wanted to kind of set up. Like, okay. All right. Um, I wanted to kind of like, you know, lay the groundwork for, you know, features. Whether I'm involved or not, I wanted to kind of tee that up for them, you know. Digital work is so important. Digital because of the, the schedule and the VFX. a significant amount of VFX in this movie. So film would, um, it would add a lot of headache. It's dealing with a lot of kids, you know, young people who want to want long takes. The film would have probably been too big of a headache for us. And, and I gotta say that uh, we shot on the Alexa, and it looks pretty damn good. I mean, we went into it. I wanted it to be raw. I wanted it to be gritty, you know, very handheld, and and not kind of bubblegum and, and you know, light. And we got it. I think we got it really, really well. Actually, it looks really good. So let's see what comes together. I uh, I may or may not know that this was a challenge for some Right. It's all part of the experience, the adventure of it all. Um, if knowing now what you experience in making the movie, would you feel there again? Yeah. Even with the point of yeah. 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 It made it real. It was a real place. You know what I mean? It wasn't staged. It was like, guys, don't go over there because there are snakes over there. Watch out for spiders underneath that thing. That's what the, the real boys would be doing. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I think it adds something to it. You know? How many snakes were found on your set? Dozens, probably. Are they poisonous? Yeah, yeah, they're poisonous things. But we had three wranglers every day. If we're going to be in this part of the glade. They go scour it and find all the little snakes and clear them out. I would say all the little snakes. Yeah, big snakes. That's the snake. I'll show it to them. All right. Here's one of our, our little visitors. There's a fun one. Cotton now. Yeah, 
That was a good one. That was literally right next to where we were shooting. Yeah. Um, like, a couple feet away. Yeah. It was fun. Um, now, talk a little bit about how far you live on the first picture. Yeah. How much were you pitching studios on ideas, on scripts? How did you plan this project? Okay, so, first story is, um, how long do you want the story to be? Well, let's do the idea of explaining whatever you want to do. Okay, I'll give you my quick, quick story of how I got to this place. I think it's a good story. I think it's for kind of young filmmakers who all want the same thing. I uh, went to film school, live action, learned live action filmmaking. So I cut on film, actually cut film for real and spliced it and did all that. So it was a great experience. Then I went digital. Um, my thesis film at film school there, uh, I was doing my first animated movie. So I did a little animated short, a work in progress, won a bunch of awards, won a student officer off of that, came out to LA right after that, and all the doors were open. So I got a lot of, uh, I got the bottle of water tour, right? I was around 22, 22 years old, very young. And uh, I sold my first movie uh, about, about a couple months later, and uh, set that up at Warner Brothers, got my first case of development, and it went terrible. It wasn't good. Um, it was a great learning experience, though. So, Right after that happened, I still pursued the directing thing, but I also started up my VFX company. So I started doing commercials and music videos and all kinds of stuff like that, and just learning how to do, you know, learning how to use that tool. And so that a couple of years went by, I basically uh, decided I was going to make this little short called Ruin. And Ruin was, you know, basically my big kind of, you know, epic, you know, dream project that I've been working on for many, many years. Made this little short as kind of introduction to the world. Basically, it was an excuse for me to make something for myself and have fun again. Um, so I did that, put it out online, it exploded, the doors came open again. So this time I was a little bit wiser, a um, little, little less enamored, sort of with uh, the Hollywood thing. Um, met everyone around the studios, met particularly the, the everyone at Fox. Really liked everyone there, really cool people. Um, while I was talking about Ruin, they gave me this book, Maze Hunter. It's so a good take it home, see what you think about it. So I read the book. A week or two later, I realized I could do something kind of cool with this. Went in and uh, pitched everyone at Fox on my take on the on the book, and uh, and they said you're our director. And that was it. Yes. Okay. So that was the other thing. So yeah, as I was flirting around with the ruin a little bit, on that Monday I went in and pitched uh, Maze Runner. By that point, I had you know. A lot of artwork that I generated myself, some previews I made myself. So I had a little bit of a presentation, right? Um, so that was on a Monday. Pitched Emma, uh, president of the studio there. She said, basically, in the room, you're our director. That's a good job. Let's, let's, get, let's get going. And so Tuesday morning comes, and they call and say, you know, we still want you to write this thing. We think you're going to do a good job. But we want to kind of slow down for a second, put a brakes on, because we see we have you coming in on Wednesday to come pitch your feature version of Room. And uh, so I had that hanging over my head, you know, while I was pitching this dream project of mine. Wednesday morning comes around, I, uh, I pitched my version of Ruin and was sold in the room. And so by the end of that day, went, uh, Wednesday, 12 hours later, all the deals and all this craziness, it was a whirlwind of a day, I had two movies to talk. So we started Mage Runner almost right away, and uh, Ruin is, you know, also in on its course to, you know, we'll see what happens. I gotta wrap it real quick, but I definitely want to ask about the visual effects. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you have the familiarity with those visual Yeah, effects. that's my world. Totally. Uh, I want to ask you to do a walk around the property and whatever. Nice. You can get some of the effects for yourself. Yeah. Just yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably do some stuff in this. That's what I wanted to know. So yeah. It's like, hey, let's do your gear back. Yeah. Be, are you positive in doing your stuff? I will, I will, I, I told everyone actually, Method is, Method Studios is doing our VFX. Uh, Stu Rose, my other person, uh, Eric Brevik too. Um, uh, we have some awesome, awesome guys working on this thing. Some guys have like Oscars behind their name, okay? Like, they're, they're, they're all really excited and, and jazzed for our tiny little movie here. And they're doing some, they're going to be doing some awesome work. I've seen a couple tests here and there for some of our grievers, some of our walls. It's been fantastic. But I told them all when I first came on, I'm going to do a couple of shots. A couple. I'll pick the easy ones, you know, but I'll, I just I just want myself just to do something, you know, my, my own little shots, you know, like the idea of it. So. Well, I'm to wrap it up. I'm going to say, uh, congrats on everything. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it.